Masechet Babakama Daf Zayin. Yesterday we saw a machloket about the pasuk Metav Sadehu u Metav Karmo Yeshalem. Uh, someone who causes damage to someone else, he has to pay from his best field. Who is the pronoun? Do, who does the pronoun refer to in his best field? Rabbi Ishmael said it's the best field of the nizak of the victim, and Rabbi Akiba says it's the best field of the mazik, the one who caused the damage and who is paying has to pay from his best field. And then the Akiva added the words, Vekal vachomer lehekdesh, and all the more so for hekdesh. Now, uh, this is uh, not clear. What does this mean? So, that's what we're going to discuss today. Rebekiva says that the Pasuk tells you you have to pay from the best uh, field. Uh, the, the, the one who pays for from his best field to the one who the damage was done to, and all the more so for Hekdesh. What does that mean, all the more so for Hekdesh? Maybe it is a case of damages involving Hekdesh, such that me, I'm a commoner, my ox went and uh, uh, gored an ox that belongs to Hekdesh. Uh, right, someone consecrated their animal, and so uh, it's, it belongs to the Bet Mikdash, and so now my go- my ox gored it. So it says Shor Re'ehu. The pasuk says only if an ox uh, gores the ox of his friend, Amar Chamana velo Shor Shor Shel Hekdesh. And this comes to teach us that I, we only have to pay. This is the the, the normal rules of Shor Tam uh, half. Then the Shor Moad you have to pay for the entire damage. That's only if it's a commoner against a commoner. But if it's a Shor hek, Shel Hekdesh then one does not pay. So now that we see that, that's the law, that if it's if, if it involves the uh, short of Hekdesh, then there's no payment. So obviously, Rabbi Akiva can't be talking about that case, that you'd have to pay from the best quality. In that case, you don't even have to pay at all. Rather, it's talking about someone who makes a pledge uh, to donate uh, a certain amount, 100 dinar, for the temple maintenance, and he's not he's not making a animal hekdesh, not we're not involving uh, kedushat haguf, but rather kedushat mamon. I'm obligating myself of, as a vow to pay this amount. Um, and in that case, the temple treasurer writes recorded, and temple treasurer can come anytime and collect it. When he collects it, Rabbi Akiva is teaching that he can collect it from the best land, um, even though it's a hundred dinar value, um, uh, but a hundred dinar value from the best land, even though it's smaller, is better than a hundred dinar value of a bigger piece of land that's lesser of, of lesser value. So when one is making such a donation, um, uh, so uh, and the 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 uh, tre- treasurer comes to collect it. He has the right to collect from the best. That's what Rabbi Akiva is teaching, and he's saying all the more so if when one pays damages, uh, he has to pay from Edith, All the more so one who's paying a pledge to the Bet Hamikdash has to pay from the best. Now we add, challenge this law. Wait a second. This, when the treasurer comes to collect it, it's basically the same as collecting a, a loan. Uh, someone, even though it's not technically a loan, if I make a donation to the Bet HaMikdash, so now, once I make that donation, that pledge, um, I owe the Bet HaMikdash, so something that I owe, and now the treasurer is coming to uh, collect that thing that I owed. Well, the general rule of a Baal Chod, of a creditor, is that he pays of medium quality land. So this should be the same, and therefore should be only medium quality land. Why would Rabbi Akiva say that for the treasury, temple treasury has to be the best quality? And maybe you'll say, well, Rabbi Akiva thinks that in general, creditors have to pay the best land. Not against the majority opinion that says medium quality. Debekivas is the best quality, and here also best quality for the temple treasury. If even if even if you say that, the Kava Khomed would not be a logical Kava Khomed because 
a commoner has greater power when it comes to damages. We just said that commoner, a commoner's ox that uh, attacks another commoner's ox, ox gets paid and gets paid from superior land. And so that's, that would explain why when it comes to loans to a commoner, also uh, one would have to pay with the best land, right? Because they already had, we see there's already greater power. So we, we can, would not be able to make a Kava Chomed from a commoner to Hekdesh because regarding Hekdesh, they have less power when it comes to damages, right? If my commoner, my ox gores a ox that belongs to Hekdesh, uh, he, they, cannot, they cannot collect at all, certainly not from the best land, not from anything. And so that would, that would show that the Bet HaMikdash Hekdesh has less power, since it has less power with Nizakin, it's likely that it has less power for collecting loans. So even if you say to Biyaki, that according to the Biyakiva, a commoner can collect a loan from the best land, that does not mean at all that Hekdesh can also collect loan from the best land. So the Kalva Chomid would not work. So therefore we reject this interpretation that is talking about collecting a loan, uh, uh, of a, uh, uh, making a pledge to the Bet HaMikdash and then the treasurer collecting a loan. We're going to go back to the other answer. Indeed, is talking about that my ox went and gored a consecrated ox. And we asked about it. Hold on. In that case, there is no payment because Pasuk says, only if it uh, gores the ox of my friend, meaning another commoner, and not that of Hikdesh. Although that's the majority opinion, Rabbi Akiva Savala Kirbishimon ben Menasya, Rabbi Akiva may follow the minority opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya, the Tanya. Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya Omer, Shor Shel Hikdesh, Shenagach Shor Shel Hedjot Patur, Shor Shel Hedjot, Shenagach Shor Shel Hikdesh, Ben Tam, Ben Moad, Meshalem, Nezik Shalem. Although Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya agrees that if a consecrated ox gores a commoner's ox, the hekdesh does not have to pay anything. That's true, and we can learn that. We can learn that from short re'ehu only if it's a uh, fellow commoner ox. But if the if the one that gored is hekdesh, then it's not a fellow ox. Um, so yes, that that way is true. Uh, to be Shimon ben I would agree. But the other way around, if my common ox went and the gored an ox of Hekdesh, whether it's Tam and whether it's Mu'ad, one has to pay full cost, full, 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 uh, full Nezek Shalem. Um, that also fits with Shorda Ehu. When the context of Shorda Ehu is the distinction between Tam and Mu'ad. So when is there a distinction between Tam and Mu'ad? Only if it's a commoner versus a commoner. But if it's a commoner, my ox, Gorad Hekadesh, I have to pay a full amount, even if it's only Tam. That is the opinion of Bishama ben Asya. And therefore, it could very well be that this is the, the Be'akiba follows that. And that's why he's saying one has to pay from the most, and even a kava chomed hekdesh, all the more so, it's if it's a hekdesh um, where I have to pay, even if it's tam. So all the more so, I would have to pay from the best land. So hold on. Once we know this, now we see that the Bishma and the Be'akiva are actually arguing on a um, on, on yet another matter, right? Whether a commoner's ox that Gore's uh, Hekadesh ox has to pay or not. So maybe actually that's the locus of their machloket. How do you know that they also are arguing regarding whether it's the best land of the Nizak, what Rabbi Ishmael says, or the best land of the Mazik, which is what Rabbi Akiva says? Maybe not. Dilma kudekula alma benizak shaminan v'hacha bepiluktad did Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya v'rabanan kami palge. Maybe in fact everybody agrees with what we thought before was only Rabbi Ishmael's opinion that one pays with the best land of the Nizak of the victim. And the machloket between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel is actually whether they agree with Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya or Rabbanan. Rabbi Akiva sabar ke Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya, and Rabbi Shmuel sabar ke Rabbanan. Rabbi Akiva follows Rabbi Shimon ben Menasya that if a commoner's ox gores a hekdesh ox, he does. The commoner has to pay a full amount, and he's and the full amount would be from the edit the best land of the Nizak, the best that the Hekdesh has, um, because he agrees in that sense, um, he agrees with the regular law of Rabbi Ishmael, that's always the Nizak. And Rabbi Ishmael thinks like Rabbanan, that if a commoner 
Gore is another commoner's ox. If a commoner's ox gores a hekdesh, he doesn't pay anything at all. And that's the main point of the argument. But really, they all agree that um, one assesses from the best land of the nizak. Right? Could that be? And we say no. For three reasons, it doesn't fit the wording of the Braita, the Braita that we saw yesterday. In Ken Mai, Lo Baha Katuv. Right? Rabbi Akiva's statement started off with um, Lo Baha Katuv. Rabbi Shmel quoted the Pasuk. Metav Sadehu, Metav Karmo Yishalem. Rabbi Akiva said, No. Lo Baha Katuv, Ela, Ligbot Nizakin, Min Haidit. So that language of Lo Baha Katuv shows that he disagrees about how to understand the Pasuk itself. And who does who does the metav sedehu mean um, that one has to collect from the edit from the best of the payer? So that's uh, num- proof number one that this language would make sense if he agreed. Um, furthermore, if the primary machloket was uh, in fact itself about uh, what um, uh, what what uh, uh, the case of hekdesh? Then what would be kavachomel hekdesh? Kavachomel shows that's adding yet another law to the main uh, to the main argument, right? The lo ba katuv lekbotim lanizikim in aidit is the main argument that Rebbe Akiva says you have to pay from the mazik, uh, the best land of the mazik, and then kavachomel hekdesh is then then an application to it. Ve'od ha amar Rav Asher Tanya behedya metav sedeu metav karmo yishalem metav sedeu shen nizak metav karmo shen nizak Bishmael omer debi Bishmael Rabbi Akiva omer metav sedeu shel mazik metav karmo shel mazik and furthermore Rav Asher says there is an explicit brayta that elaborates exactly what their machloket is regarding the pasuk the best of his land and the best of his vineyard he shall pay. Uh, Rabbi Ishmael says it means the best of the land of the Nizak, the best of the vineyard of the Nizak of the victim. And Rabbi Akiva says the best of the land of the Mazik and the best of the vineyard of the Mazik. So you see it's clear here that the Machloket is number one, certainly for sure, about whose land is assessed when you're deciding what the best land means. And then as a side point, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Akiva adds, oh, Kavachom el which means that, according to the B. Ish Akiba, he does follow the Bishimon ben, ben Ben Asya also. And he has a disagreement regarding that as well. And so that if a commoner, a commoner's ox, gore is that of a hektesh, the Bishmael may very well agree with Rabbanan and say you don't have to pay anything at all. The Akiba says you have to pay, and you have to pay the full amount, whether it's tam or not. And even in that case, and, and all the more so in that case, one has to pay. Uh, the uh, from the best of the land of the mazik and the kava chomer works because um, you, one does have to pay for 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 nizakin um, and uh, uh, if uh, one does have to pay nizakin if a commoner's ox gores a a um, a holy uh, a consecrated ox and since the, the the obligation is greater because even in short time you have to pay that's the basis of the kava chomer and so this is a nice clear reading of the Braita. Continuing with the analysis of this pasuk metav sadehu, uh, we have a contradiction between two sources. Rame le abaye le rava abaye challenges rava with the following contradiction. Ketiv metav sadehu metav karmo yishalem metav in midia harina la. On the one hand, we have the, the simple reading of the pasuk that one has to pay from the best of his land. So that means, yes, he pays from the best of his land, but not, he cannot pay anything else. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the damager has to pay with the best of his land. But there's another Braita that quotes the, the, the word, he shall uh, pay back uh, in, in uh, context of a donkey falling into a pit. And the Braita learns from that, Yashiv, that this includes something that is the value of money, it doesn't have to be cash itself, he can pay anything that is worth money, even bran. Bran is a very inferior uh, type of grain, part of the grain, and so you can pay anything with, you could use anything, it doesn't have to be the best land, you can pay back with even with cheap, uh, cheap substance, you just have to pay a lot of it. Um, uh, you'll have to give a lot of it, whatever the value is worth. So we have a contradiction. The, uh, the Torah says, the Pasuk says the best uh, land, and this Braita says anything that's worth any value of money. Uh, we're going to see two uh, ways to resolve it. The first one, Rava says, kan midato, kan be'al korho. The Braita that says you can pay back with using anything, even bran, that's if the 
uh, injure the, the the payer, the one who did the injury, um, does uh, pays on his uh, on his own. He comes right with you, even without going to, being taken to court. He comes says, "Listen, I want to pay for this uh, thing that I broke, and here is a giant pile of bran that I'm going to pay." Then he can pay with with any item that he wants. However, if he's paying against his will, that the uh, victim had to bring him to court and force him and sue him, and the court had to come and and uh, and force him to pay. And then he has to pay with the best quality land, which would make sense because that um, is, uh, counterbalances the trouble that the victim had to go through to force him. So this would encourage people to pay up front and not have to go um, get sued in court. Amar Ula says, in fact, the Pasuk makes sense that it should be so, that because the Pasuk says, Pay, which means against his will. That's the pasuk here we've been talking about. Yeshalem, Yeshalem, meaning when he has to pay against his will, because the court extracts it from him. However, Amal Abaye, Abaye challenges Ola. Miketiv Yeshulam, Yeshalem keti midato mashma. Now, if the pasuk was in passive form, um, he, he shall be paid. Then it would say he shall be paid even against his will. But Yeshalem, as an active verb, sounds like he decided, yes, I will come and pay. So there's actually no proof from the pasuk that this is um, that this is a, a case of uh, paying against his will. So therefore, Abaye uh, uh, challenges the previous answer and he provides his own. Elam I'm going to answer as Rabba said in a completely different case. Rabba made a distinction. And the Bayez is going to apply that distinction to our to to answer the our contradiction between the pasuk and the Braita. The Tanya, Hadesh Ayulo Batim Sadot Uchramim Venomose Le Mochran, Machilin Oto Maser Ani Ad Mehasa. Maser Ani is a poor man's title. One has to give it to a poor person. The definition of a poor person is someone who has less than two hundred zoos to his name. Okay, now we're now we're talking about a person who actually is wealthy. He has uh, houses and fields and vineyards, but he's not liquid and he can't sell it right now. The market is down. He can't find a buyer. And so now he has on the one hand, it's true he has property, but he can't sell it and he has no cash and he has nothing to eat. So that person is eligible to receive um, tithe that's meant for a poor person because right now he's effectively poor. How much can he get? Up, up to half of his assets. Right? Eventually he'll be able to sell his assets and cover that cost and he'll pay back um, the amount that he took. Um, but this should be up to half. All right. Now that was the bright asset. The master Rabba analyzed this and he said, so why is, how come his land is not sellable? Is it because there's a depression and his own land depreciated and everybody else's land also depreciated, right? Just this, the, the market in total is all the way down. Well, then let him take even more than half because the, his land is basically worth, you know, well, I don't know how much it's worth. It's worth... Uh, uh, you know, cents on the dollar, and so he is actually poor in that in that in that case, and and so is everybody else here, um, and so he should be able to take as much as he wants. Um, Maybe it's talking about there's not a general depression. Everybody's land, everybody else's land, is at regular good, high priced market value. But this guy, his own, is less because he's going in and out from money. He keeps going and borrowing money and he's out of money and he pays back, but then he has to borrow again. And everybody sees he's strapped for cash and he's going to have to sell. He's going to be um, in, uh, in pressured to sell. And so therefore his land becomes less valuable. So the market is generally good, but his land in particular is less valuable. Then then he shouldn't be able to take anything because the market is totally fine. Okay, so his he's under pressure. He went down. His his price went down a little bit. That doesn't make him a poor person. Fine. So he has to sell. That's why people sell because they're right because they need cash. So that this is just a regular case, and he shouldn't have to be able to take anything. So now we have a problem. What 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 would be a case where he would take half 
um, only. Uh, and so the master, the Rabbah said, La Sericha de Biomeni Sani Yakra Arata. See, land is worth different amounts at different times. In Nisan, that's when the harvest comes. If I sell my land, when it's, the grain is all nice and, and, about, and about to be ripened, and you can just come and harvest it, so I'm selling the land with all this crop. Um, so that's worth a lot, uh, a lot. Whereas during in Tishrei, that's after the harvest season is done and the bed, the land is empty. And now you're going to have to go work and uh, plow it. And uh, if it's in time to even, if you can plow it by that, by then and wait till the rain comes, so then it's worth a lot less. So that's what we're talking about. That in uh, this guy's uh, uh, needs is trying to sell the money. He's down and out and it happens to be Tishrei time when his land is worth a little. And he doesn't want to sell the land now because he can only get uh, how much how much less is it in Tishrei than in Nisan it's worth about half as much and so he'd rather wait till Nisan when it grows and then he can sell it for twice as much that's the person we're talking about that he's allowed to take from Maaser Ani up to half of what his land is worth meaning what his land is worth now which is half of what it will be worth in Nisan and that way he can buy time and wait till Nisan and, and sell it for more. Right, everybody who, wa- who would want to sell uh, can wait, would wait till Nisan and sell at that point. That would be the normal time to sell because you get the highest price. But this guy, since he's in need, um, so he has to sell now. Um, so up to half. That's how much the, the, the value of the land depreciates, but not more than that. Uh, it doesn't depreciate that much less, less than half. That's why we allow him to take up to half. Good. That's all the case that Rabbah, uh, uh, Rabbah's teacher, talked about. Rabbah said, uh, now that I understand this distinction between the price in Nisan and the price of Tishrei, I can use that to solve our contradiction here as well. Here too, the first pasuk is giving you the basic law that if one is paying with a deed, uh, if one is paying yeah, and he's giving the best land, so then he gives the best land and that would be according to the current market value such that if he's paying, if the uh, uh, person, who, person who's paying, the one that did the injury is paying in Tishrei, he's going to have to give relatively more of his best land because right now the price is at a is a, is a is a low price during the year so that's the basic law we have to give the best land however if the victim says listen instead of giving me a deed give me benonit land and you'll give me more of it which would be the same value if he decides to break from the standard a deed payment then the uh, perpetrator can say, Listen, if you uh, collect according to the, um, the, the, the legal, the, the normal legal right from Edith, then you'll, you can take according to the current value in Tishrei and you'll get more land. But if not, if you break from the standard type of payment and you want to take Benonit, then I'm going to value value it according to the Nisan prices, even though right now it's Tishrei, because it will be Nisan. And so I have a right to evaluate it according to Nisan prices and therefore the victim will end up getting less. That's what the Baraita was talking about. The Torah goes out of its way to say, listen, um, pay from the best land. And that's just a, a standard payment. And that'll be from the current price whenever you're paying, even if, it's, uh, even if the market is, a low, is at a low time during the year, right? That's the Torah law. Once you break from the Torah law and you say, listen, uh, you don't have so much uh, uh, edit, or maybe the edit's not in the convenient, your edit's not in a convenient place, for me, and I'd rather have it close to my house, and that's where your Benonit is. Okay, in that case, you can pay whatever you want. Um, yes, but you're only going to get the value of Nissan value 
which is a higher value, and therefore you're going to get less land, and that's what the Badaita is teaching. Okay, so that's the second way of uh, explaining the contradiction. However, this is rejected. This doesn't make sense because then you are weakening the power of uh, uh, the, the claim of the victims when it comes to Benonit or Ziburit land, middle or low quality land. The Torah says from the best. So Torah, the point of the Torah's law is to go out of its way to say that the victim should not be penalized. The victim, poor guy, he had his uh, ox destroyed or his house destroyed, whatever, um, and he's he's out. He's out and he's out, he has a loss, and and that's bad enough that he has to deal with this loss. But he also um, he has to get paid, and he also it's a, such a pain. You know, you'd rather not get into a someone hit your car. Even if they're, uh, the, the insurance comp- their insurance company will pay for it and you won't have a problem still, it's a pain to have to sit and deal with uh, th- this thing. So Torah goes out of its way to benefit the Nizak and give the Nizak from the best land. The best land is always the best because it's easily sellable. Everybody wants best land. Um, and so the victim can easily sell it and pay, do whatever he wants with it and pay for his damages. So the Torah goes out of its way to say we, we want to give preference to the Nizak. And now you come and say, well, that's only true regarding Edi to best land, but if, it, if he ends up paying, if he has to pay from Benonit or Ziburit, then he gets assessed the higher amount of during Nisan, which means he gets less land. That goes against the principle of the Torah. Torah so trying to help out the Nizak and not to make it worse for him. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to say, well, if he gets Benonit or Ziburit, then he gets less land. That doesn't make sense. That's not what the Torah would have, would have wanted. So another answer. Uh, not another answer to our original question. Rav Bar Yaakov says, listen, but you know what, uh, Abaye, I like this distinction that you made between the price of uh, the price during Tishteh and the price of uh, uh, during Nisan that you learned from uh, your teacher, Rabba. Um, and uh, even though I don't agree with your application of that distinction to this case, I do think that it can be applied to a different case. If you're going to compare it, I would compare it to a case of a creditor um, uh, where he comes to uh, collect the loan during Tishideh. The general standard rule is that someone who comes to collect a loan gets to collect from Benonit medium land. But if the collector, uh, the creditor, comes and uh, says, you know what, pay me back from the uh, from the lowest land and give me more, right? And that's okay. I'd, I'd rather have your uh, cheapest land. Uh, I just want to you know, build a warehouse and uh, I, I, I could use cheapest land. doesn't matter to me. So he's rather to get bigger land. Then the borrower who's paying has a right to say, listen, if you're going to follow the standard rule of, uh, of Benonit, then you can take from the current market value in Tishreh, which is a lower value, and you'll end up getting more land. But if you deviate from the standard and you take uh, um, lowest quality land, then I'm, I, I have a right to uh, evaluate it according to the prices of Nisan, and you'll end up getting less land. So Rav HaBar Yaakov says, I like your distinction. I don't think it applies to a Nizak, because the Torah wants to help the Nizak. But regarding a creditor, um, there, there, there's no special help that we need to give to a creditor. And so I, I, I would apply the distinction there. However, Matkif la Ravacha Bered Rav Ika, Ravacha Bered Rav Ika challenges that application to a creditor. Uh, if you do that, then you will lock the door in the face of potential borrowers. In other words, lenders will not want to lend because they'll know that when they come to collect, they'll be at a disadvantage. The lender will say, listen, if I had kept my money and not lent you, then I would have been able to buy a, a, some, a, 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 your land, Ziburit land, according to the current Tishrei market value, which would be good because then you could buy a lot of land. 
Hashta dezuzeg abach eshkol ki ukrada lekame. But now, because I did you a favor and I lent you money, and now and the money's in your hands, now I can only get from the from the future price of Nisan and only get less land. I did you a favor and I lose out on it. You know what? I shouldn't have uh, lent you in the first place. And then people won't want to lend money um, in, a, at all. And, what the, the, and what, who, the, who ends up suffering for that is the borrowers that they can't get their loans. And so that's not a good application of it either. Rather, a th- another application as a fourth ap- p- potential application of the distinction that Abba made between different prices. El amar rav acha rav ika. If you really want to bring a comparison, I can apply Rabba's distinction to the payment of a ketubah. The standard law is that when a woman comes to collect a ketubah after divorce or death of her husband, from her husband or from the inheritance, um, she collects from the lowest land. But if she comes and says, listen, I would prefer getting Benonit land and you can give me less and there'll be the same price. The husband can tell the wife or his inheritance can tell, can tell the wife, the, can tell the widow. If you take according to the standard, which is Ziburit, then you can get according to the current market price in Tishrei, and you'll get a more, you'll get a lot of land. But if not, if you're going to change from the standard and take medium quality land, then we have a right to assess it according to Nisan value, and you'll end up getting less. And uh, so that is uh, yet another possible application of this distinction. Okay, now that we now that we went on this tangent of all different ways that Rabba's distinction between Tishrei prices and Nisan prices can be applied, we go back to the original question, Mikol Makom Kashya. We still haven't solved the original question that the Brait, that the Pasuk says, Metav Sadehu, and the Braita says you can pay for, for, for anything, even for, from Bran. And we rejected the first two answers. The first answer was actually by Rava, but now Rava gives a yet another answer. Amar Rava, kol diahib le mimetab liteb le. Rava reconciles the two sources by saying, listen, you can pay with anything, but whatever you're going to pay with, it should be the best of that item. So the Pasuk was talking about, for example, if you pay with a, with a field, make it the best field. If you pay with bran, make it the best bran. If you pay with apples, make sure you pay with the best apples. So that's what it's saying, right? You can actually pay with anything, but as long as it's the best of that item. And so, yes, in fact, you can pay with anything. We reject this, however. Tot doesn't say just give from the best. It says the best of the field, which suggests that you actually have to pay from a field, not just with not with bran or anything that you want. Uh, so another yet the last answer when a papa and Rav Huna, the son of Yeshua, came from the house of Rav. Rav doesn't mean the first ten, first generation Tana, because the papa is a fifth generation. Sorry, Amora, uh, and Rav is a first generation Amora, so they would not have known each other. Rather, Be Rav is a phrase that means from the from the study house of the rabbi. It means the Bet Midrash. Not Rav as a name, but Berav as a institution. Uh, per Shuha. And they, in the Bet Midrash, we uh, understood it as follows. He explains that if, he, if you pay with movable items, any movable item is called the best because even if it's not the best here, the market is low for it here. In another place, uh, there are buyers that will go and, and want to buy it. So therefore, if you're paying with movable items, items. You can pay even with bran, which is a, pr- a pretty cheap item. Um, and there's always a buyer for movable items. Even if there's no buyers here, there's buyers over there. Okay, so move it, to, move it, take it to the other market and you'll easily be able to sell this and take your money and then pay for the pay for your 
uh, uh, damages to fix your car, to fix your ox, or whatever you need. However, the only exception to this is land. Land is not movable. And so if, I, if you give me some junky piece of land and uh, for my damages, and I'm going to have a hard time selling it, so now I, I really can't, I, I can't sell it and I need cash. I need cash to go buy another ox because you killed my ox. And now this bad land, I'm not, it's not going to be easily sellable. Um, uh, so that's why the Torah says, give the best, because everybody was, is going to jump at the opportunity for the best land, right? Like, uh, you know, the highest real estate in Manhattan, you can always easily sell it, even though it's the best, precisely because it's the best. And it's going to be, uh, even though it's expensive, but it's something that everybody wants. So there's a, always a ready market for it. Whereas a very big piece of land out in the middle of nowhere but yeah, it's a lot of land, but nobody wants it, and uh, it's harder to sell. So therefore, the point is that the mazik um, can pay the nizak from anything, right? Um, and doesn't have to pay with land. He can pay from anything. And if he pays cash, good. Cash is king. That's the best. If he pays from movable items, also fine, because the nizak will be able to unload it. And even if over here everybody has apples, but I'll take it to the next town and they'll and they'll buy. Everybody will buy these items at some market price somewhere. Um, uh, but land, I can't just move it to another place. So that's why Torah says, if you're paying with land, then the land has to be from the highest value. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.